Good morning. Is it? Any chance of a cup of tea? Help yourself. That's what you're good at, aren't you, Eric? Right, well, uh, haven't got time, really. Got to get to the factory. Can't have those workers enjoying themselves now, can we? Are you, uh, you joining me? I don't think so, somehow. Not today. Haven't got the stomach for it. Then I have to see Edna Birch about the flowers for the altar. So that's something to look forward to, I suppose. This is from Paul, you know, my cousin. He's invited us over to Sorrento. Sorrento? I have to say, Billy, it's very tempting. I'd have to get someone to cover for me, of course. Yeah, well, let's talk about it later, shall we? I'd better get off to church. But if it were up to me, we'd go today. We could both do with a holiday, couldn't we? Do you have the almanac, Emily? No, but I'll order it for you special. Can you meet me for lunch today, out on the bench? OK, I'll bring you sandwiches. See you later. Can't wait. Bye. What's that, Viv? I've got a load of black stockings to get to Pontefract before lunch. Hang about. We never say goodbye without a kiss, remember? <sighs> And while I've got you in my grasp, what was that Roger going on about last night? Saying he knew lots of stories about you. Oh, and uh, he always talks rubbish when he's drunk. And when he's sober. Well, why would he carry on like that? Has he got something against you? Roger Crosby is known as Roger the Dodger in hosiery circles. He's my main rival, Vivian. And if I've got anything to do with it, he won't be sniffing around these parts again. Morning. 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 What do you want? Who said I wanted anything? Female intuition, psychic powers, or years of practice. <laughs> I would like to treat everybody to dinner tonight at Shea Marlon, celebrate my new business venture. Make it a real family do. Oh, that'd be great, Dad. Uh, you and Ashley come, won't you, Benice? Yeah, of course we will. Carlos, hope you'll join us. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Why don't you come down? Bring that farmer friend of yours. Jack's far too busy, thank you very much. And so am I. Oh, I. He'd be too busy digging his tatties, won't he? <laughs> you don't know what you're missing, Diane. Yes, I do. See you later, girls. Where's Gloria today, then? I don't know. He's not going to find her under there. <laughs> not quite himself today, is he? You're late, Mrs. Batch. I am exactly three minutes late, and that is due to the vicar keeping me waiting on the church flowers. Yes, yes, yes. Well, get on with your work, please. <sighs> What's up with him? Oh, nothing. He knows better than to tackle me, that's all. No, nah, it's not that, Edna. He's been maudlin since he got here. He's barely started and my feet are killing me. The cheek of your father. He's left me with hardly any staff tonight. I can stay, you know, and work behind the bar. Oh, no, love, you deserve a break. Your father thinks he's Lloyd Grossman now he's got his feet under the table at Cher Marlon, doesn't he? Mum, he can put his money into whatever takes his fancy. No, he's done that a few times, I can tell you. Usually women. Honestly, Mum, I don't mind if you want me to stay here. No, he'll only use it against me. And you don't want Nicola upsetting, do you? No, you go out, enjoy yourself. There you go. Oh, don't know if I can get it down, but thanks. I say that smell's getting worse. It's making my stomach turn. No, it'll be all the hell you sucked in Woolpack last night. What's that? What's the big rush? What's that big stink more like? Do you know it's getting worse? Oh, shut up, Bob. <laughs> oh, help yourself to toast, Bob. No, thank you. And I'd appreciate it if you didn't go shouting your mouth off round here. Oh, I. So why's that, then? I am very nicely set up here with my new wife, Vivian. Oh. You are, are you? Yes, I am. And I don't want anybody knowing about my past. What's going on between those two? We're just a couple of mates catching up. Huh. Doesn't look like that to me. I cherish my Vivian. I've got a new life here. I don't want anybody spoiling that for me. Hmm. 
It's a lovely village. Little oasis to come back to after the madness of hosiery sales. I know what you're getting at, Roger Crosby. Well, there's room for only one lady's hosiery salesman in this town. <laughs> Do I detect a hint of menace in your voice, Bob? I think all right, gentlemen. No, oh, superb. Although that smell's getting worse, you know. Yeah. You wouldn't want word getting to your new employer, would you, Roger? About how you can't keep off the ale, or your hands off Le Clientel. All right, all right. I'll get the message. Let's call a truce. Go and do what we do best. Selling hosiery. Oh, I'm not looking forward to this meal tonight, Carlos. No, me neither. It's going to be so uncomfortable, what with you, Ashley and Nicola there. That's my name. Don't wear it out. What were you saying about me, then? Oh, just trying to work out when you could take your break, that's all. Oh, can I go now, Bernice, uh, and nip to the shop? Need some new nail varnish. Yeah, no problem. I'm going to look my best for tonight, don't I? Oh, Carlos, I feel awful. What are we going to do? Turn up, keep smiling, and get through the night as best we can. Hey, I know what'll cheer you up. Oh, yeah, what's that, then? Do you think Bob was in a funny mood this morning, Emily? No more than usual. I think it's got something to do with that Roger. He's really got under Bob's skin, you know. Are they old friends, Mrs Orp? I think so. I don't really know any of Bob's pals. Anyway, Ed'll be here soon. We're having lunch together. Yeah, lovely. Oh! Bob's left his briefcase. He never leaves his briefcase. Hold the fort, Emily. I won't be long. Oh, well, I can't stay for long. I'm meeting Ed. Can't you do your signature any faster? Oh, where did I put my mobile phone? Oh, will you please hurry up? It's all right. Panic over. It's in my pocket. Ready for the off, then, gentlemen? Yes, you are, aren't you, Roger? Well, thank you for a very comfortable night. Right, you Roger. Time to go now. Apart from the awful pong, would have been first class, love. Thanks, Terry. I owe you one. I know you know more than you're telling me, Terry Woods. Just keep it out of it, Carol. Oh, have you seen Bob? I just wanted to give him his briefcase. Yeah, but uh, he left ages ago. With that dodgy Roger geezer. With Roger? I thought they didn't get on. It didn't look like that to me. Having a jolly good chat in here, they were. Really? Any ideas what they were talking about? Well, from what I heard, mainly about you. No, I think they were talking about business, mostly. Yeah, probably. Will you see, Bob? Tell him I want a word. Yeah, yeah, of course we will. What's going on, Terry? We don't keep things from each other, do we? All right, all right, then. But you better keep quiet. Bob's been married before. And does Viv know there was another Mrs Hope before her? She knows about one of them. Well, how many were there? I don't know, love. But we'd best keep out of it. You know me, Terry. My lips are sealed. I'm sorry we have to eat here in the shop, Ed, but well, Mrs orp has got a lot on her mind. Oh, I don't mind. No, oh, look at you two lovebirds. Where was that gorgeous nail varnish I saw last time, Em? Hey, do you fancy coming out with us all tonight to a family do? Us two? Well, of course you two. You like family. Seven o'clock, Shane Marlon. Oh, well, that would be lovely. Are you sure that will be okay with turning up like that? That won't mind. It's not my phone, it's not my ring. from in here. Give us a minute. I'd better get back to work, Em. I'll see you later. OK. I'll make you a cup of tea, Mrs Up. I was just trying to get hold of Bob. Emily, do you think it's odd that Bob's away so much? Yes. Well, 
that's what you'd expect, I suppose, in this line of business. Well, some women prefer their husbands working away, don't they? So they're not under their feet all the time. I suppose so. Well, that's what you've got into. Mr. Orb's not here long enough to get under your feet, is he? No, he isn't. Not like me and Ed. Well, I saw him this morning in the shop, just now for lunch, and we're having dinner tonight in Shea Marlow. You can have too much of a good thing, you know. I suppose so, but it's better than nothing, isn't it? No sign of life, then. He's not shifted out of that office once today. I'll tell him we're off. Excuse me, Mr Pollard. The correct protocol before entering your employer's office, Cynthia, is to knock on the door first. Yeah? I know that, but me and lasses have finished for day. Oh, good. Well, I hope you've met the production target. Huh? Well, how do we know? There's only Gloria and a clipboard that can tell you that, not us. We'll see you tomorrow. Don't worry, Bob. The briefcase is here, safe and sound. Look, I just wanted a quick word with you about... Bob? Bob? Love you. Was that Mr Hope, then? Yeah. His money ran out, I think. I'm going to get ready for my night out, then. Have a nice time. I've been looking for you everywhere. Have you, Eric? I've been shopping in Hocker. No point in hanging around all day, was there? I've had a dreadful day. Have you really? I wonder why. Those awful women in the factory. You think they'd be grateful for being employed? <laughs> well, jobs are hard to come by in rural areas. You'll be laying flowers at my feet. <clears throat> the only reason why we're a success, Gloria, is because of you. Well, you would say that, wouldn't you? Uh, no, it's, it's true. Your organisational skills are impeccable. Uh, and you communicate so well with the workers. Are you just saying this to make me feel better, Eric? You're the most enthusiastic, energetic, most dynamic woman I've ever met. Uh, and they respond to that. And what about you? I can't get through the day without you. I am so sorry for the way I've treated you. It was unforgivable. Yes, it was, wasn't it? You're not leaving me, are you? I'm just wondering how much private rents are these days, that's all. Please come on, Gloria. I promise you, it will never happen again. And please come back to the factory, eh? I need you. I'll just have to think about it while you get me another orange juice. Mrs. Hope, 43 Fir Tree Avenue, Chesterfield, Derbyshire. Emily! Emily, you look delightful. Thank you. Ah, uh, Emily, Ed, how would you like to try a glass of Sancerre Premier Cru? Here, young man, have a taste of that. Thanks very much. Here you go. Come and sit here, Em, next to me. Come on, Ed. There you go. Oh. oh, you look gorgeous. She does, doesn't she? I did my best. Just a few ideas from those magazines you lent me, Nicola. Mm -hmm. Bernice, Carlos, it must be lovely to get out of the wool pack for a night. <laughs> it is, yeah. It's just what I needed. <laughs> Isn't this brilliant, Carlos? Family and mates all together. Ah, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> I can't bear this. It's a good business to be in, isn't it? Just remember what I said earlier and keep smiling through. 
Are you all right? You look a bit worried tonight. No, no, I'm fine, Ashley. Just thinking about my mum running the pub all on her own, that's all. Well, you know Diane. She'll railroad half the customers into helping her behind the bar. I know. That's what I'm worried about. Well, let's try and enjoy the evening. <laughs> be honest with you, I'm glad we're having this night out. You really deserve a break from all the hard work you put in up the wall pack, you know. Ashley! Better go, Ashley. My dad uh, wants you. Come here. Tell me what you think of this. A lovely, fruity little number. <laughs> as long as you don't ask me to bless it first. <laughs> <laughs> Would it be possible to try another glass? On me, please. That tasted lovely. Hey, study on you two. We don't want to be carrying you home at the end of the night. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. I'll open another bottle. Really uncomfortable. I'll I'll make my excuses and go. I don't want to be here just as much as you don't. But at least try to stay for me, please. Anyway, look, say your dad. Look at him. He's in his element. Mm. So is Ashley, which makes it even worse. <laughs> I'll do my best, but this isn't going to be easy. <laughs> I've scoured that B&B from top to bottom. I still can't find where the smell's coming from. Cheers. Cheers. Terry, I've been looking for you all over. My nerves are in bits. What's up, love? Tell me the truth, please. What's going on? The truth about what? I know Bob's up to something running here, there and everywhere. I can never get hold of him. Well, he's got a very stressful job out on the road all the time. He's got to get his sales up. You know that. Oh, stop making excuses for him, Terry. He's up to something all right. He's playing you for a fool, Viv. Pure and simple. Don't be silly. He thinks the world of you. Don't patronise me, Terry. Look, I found this in his briefcase. Why is he still carrying it around with him? Their marriage ended years ago. Tell her, Terry. Tell me what? Well, you see... He's having an affair with her, isn't he? You know, don't you? You'd better tell me or I... Look, 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 calm down, Viv. The... There's an explanation for all this. And? Bob's been married before. I know! More than once. What? Yeah, well, we said the last one were, were only brief. To showgirl. A showgirl? Him? In Las Vegas. He, he met her at some sales convention thing. Oh, did he now? And he never mentioned this, Viv? Never. How on earth could he keep that from you? Well, it's nothing to worry about. I mean... Elvis married them. Uh, one of those chapels. It was now serious. Oh, well, that's all right then, isn't it? If we just ignore the fact that he forgot to tell me about it. Yeah, well, he's not married now. He got one of them quickie divorces. <laughs> of course he did. I told you he was a dark horse, Viv. What are you trying to say? Well, I mean, he's never told you about this showgirl, has he? This could be another Mrs Hope waiting at home for him. Leave it, Carol. Well, I mean, these fellas, they're all the same, aren't they? They do it time and time again. You could have a bigger mist on your hands, Viv. A different wife in every town he visits. Oh, no! You're wrong about my Bob. I've always been right. I'm warning you, Carol. <laughs> Leave it, Terry. Thank you for telling me the truth. Unlike some people round here. Viv! Viv! I'll be on my own! You rotten cow. You talk to me like that. Viv needs bringing into the real world. She's always had her head in the clouds. This is her marriage we're talking about. And you're supposed to be a mate from years back. You could have made it easier on her. But oh no, you couldn't resist it, could you? You had to get your bitchy comments in. You should be ashamed of yourself. I like this one. Mm. It's got a woody flavour, hasn't it? I don't know what it's got, but it's going down well. <laughs> <laughs> Has Benice mentioned our good fortune? We have had the offer of a holiday in Italy, because of Benice's cousin. You never said anything about this. <laughs> I'm sorry, Carlos. I might have to drag my wife away from you and the wall pack, just for one week. Yes, we haven't decided yet, have we, Ashley, whether we're going or not? I'm sure we can find a way to persuade you. Mm, well, I could just grab my bikini and spend a week in Italy, couldn't you, Carlos? Aye, it'd be great. Mm, chilling out on the beach, hot sun. You are lucky, Benice. You won't be going anywhere, Nicola. You've got college, remember? Yeah, I know. And I also asked Carlos to move into a flat with me, but I'm still waiting to hear what he's saying. Are you going to take the plunge then, Carlos? Oh, I haven't really decided yet. <laughs> Need a little time to think. <laughs> Typical of men, isn't it, Benice? Takes them ages to do anything. I wouldn't keep her waiting too long, Carlos. Somebody might get in there before you. <laughs> <laughs> What do you want? Come to stick your knife in a bit more, have you? No. 
No, look, I've come to say I'm sorry. Yeah? Well, that'll be a first for you. Well, I'm not usually wrong, am I? I am, though, aren't I? But men, especially men. Well, you weren't wrong about Vic. I've never seen you so happy as you were with him in the old days. Yeah, look what happened to Vic. I'm jinxed as far as men are concerned. I'm just not meant to be happy. Oh, stop feeling so sorry for yourself. I'm not feeling sorry for myself. I'm feeling stupid and betrayed. How can he do this to me? Well, that's men for you. You should have kept him on a tighter leash. He had far too much freedom for my liking. Still, I did warn you. I told you he was shifty. He's not shifty. Just a bit... daft. I want to do love him, Carol. I haven't loved any man like I love my boop. Oh, come here, darling. He was right in front of me all the time. We didn't have a honeymoon. He didn't want to put any money into the shop. We didn't even have a joint bank account. Now I know why. He's got a harem. He's got wives and kids. Grandkids? I'll tell you what, though. No one treats a mate of mine like this. We are going to get to the bottom of this, and quick. Oh, I can't face it, I really can't. I just want to wake up tomorrow morning and find this has all just been a bad dream. Well, it is not a dream, Viv, and you have got to face it. But not on your own. Oh, no. Because first thing tomorrow, we are going to jump into my car and we are going to give this Mr and Mrs Bob hope. An early morning call they won't forget. <laughs> 